Hi everybody, welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. We all know in the power sports world that the horsepower wars are alive and well. Biggest displacement, biggest turbos, and who can go the fastest? Well, sometimes you don't need all that to have a lot of fun. Enter the 2021 SR Viper from Yamaha. So we've got this out here today on the property. We're gonna go break some trails, show you all the features on this thing, and you know we're gonna do a top speed run down on the lake. Stay tuned. This Viper is powered by a 1,049cc triple cylinder four stroke engine, which is not a new power plant, but is new in this platform last year. Makes a ton of power and puts it in the 125 horsepower category. A Yamaha doesn't actually post horsepower numbers. We can just kind of make an approximation based on the size. Now also up front here, we've got some Fox remote reservoir shocks, and these are the QS3, the quick switch three. And we've already had an instance out here on trail today where they were on the lightest setting and we've gone and cranked them up because it was getting awfully lost in the powder out here today. So those QS3 shocks carry onto the back. In the rear suspension, you also have a Fox Remote Reservoir QS3 with a simple adjustment on it. Now, this is an actual GT package, which is the luxury package on the Viper, and it includes a couple of upgraded features, one of which is this lovely heated seat. And to be honest, I got on the thing today and I saw this switch here and I thought to myself, oh cool, I'm gonna turn that on. It is minus 22. It was minus 22 when we got here this morning. I didn't notice it, but it's there and I'm sure on a more mild day, it would be noticeable. Uh, back here behind yourself, you also have a little bit of storage with this tunnel bag. There's also the tool kit and there's lots of room. Oh, it's actually frozen shut. That's how cold it is. There, now <laughs> there it's moving. Oh, this side is barely moving. So you got your tool kit and some storage back there. It's fairly deep. It's fairly deep. It goes up under the seat, so lots of room for your gear. So up here in your rider command center, the Yamaha is really focused on this stealth control system on this left side bar, which features your toggles for your left and right hand grips, warmers, your lights, your forward and reverse, as well as a quick switch button for your screen, which allows you to cycle through all your different settings and you can see your air temperatures, your fuels, your voltages, your RPMs, your speeds, whatever you'd like. But this is a redundancy. You can, if you want, set up individually which portion of the screen has what. It's cool that it's customizable and then of course these just mean you can use it on the go, right? Exactly. And actually Matt, you skipped off of one there. I just want to show people just because I think it's cool. The altimeter. Yeah, it actually shows your altitude. We're not in the mountains here in Ontario. No, not at all. <laughs> So in the styling department on this Viper, it really lives up to its name. It looks angular, aggressive, even deadly. I mean, you got the raked in front, you've got the louvers running down the hood, which actually just protect the radiator, which is nice and high mounted there. The wide out ski stance, which is, you know, almost classic on these Yamahas at this point. And all that sweeps up to, I don't know, I think a pretty cool looking little LED eyebrow plus the headlight. And that is just accentuated by this medium rise tinted windshield. Now the whole package plus the color scheme, I just think it looks sharp. It doesn't look gaudy. It doesn't stand out in a crowd, but I mean, you look at it and you go, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yes, everybody. That's the muddy section of the hydro line. And Matt's going to show you how easy it is to go through in January. <laughs> Viper now and we're gonna do a top speed run. So I'm gonna do my best to hang on to this thing while showing you the speedometer. I apologize if I get off it a little bit, but here we go.
I think I thought I saw about 130, 132 there. Um, I kind of got broken out of the ruts once or twice, so I had to hang on to it. I apologize. Um, but about 130 kilometers an hour, and I think if it wasn't for the powder, there'd probably be a bit more there, but that's still pretty impressive in like, you know, nine inches of powder snow on top of ice. So out here breaking trail today, this thing really shone, especially in the deeper powder. Now, early in the day, we actually stopped because trying to make a turn, it just would not spin around. And we're talking in a field on a hydro line, on our hydro line. It didn't want to turn around tight. And we actually dialed up the front suspension and we haven't touched the track yet because this thing's been eating the bumps out here all day. So that didn't need anything. But with the touch up on the front and the setup in the rear, it's been comfortable. It eats up everything. It lands in the powder, takes off. It never felt spongy. It always just hooked up and went. Tight corners in the powder as well, which I was a little shocked about. There was a few where I felt I was going to have to throw it, but it just bit and grabbed. Now, this unit actually comes with Yamaha's new single keel designed skis, and that might have something to do with it. But it was really impressive compared to other sleds that we've had out here in the same conditions. So we've got about a four inch riser up here on this LTX GT model. And it doesn't sound significant. Obviously you can add your own after the fact, but out here I found the transition was quite nice. I never found myself reaching in, you know, up or down. And even just that slight effort to pull up didn't seem all that much. The footwell position I also found really nice. On the rear here, you can actually see it. We almost have a mountain bar. It's not quite as aggressive, but there is a nice place to lay your feet if you're into some really deep stuff. I found once or twice today that I was getting my foot into the back here as I was kind of leaning it around some corners and it was nice, plus I'm not a small guy. That makes a running board feel a lot stronger when it's got that extra bracing at the back. As it hit those jumps, the weight on this thing, going off that hill, you felt like you were gonna stuff it at the bottom, no matter how you took off. So I kept finding myself backing off at the last second, riding the powder down rather than full send. On the other hand, coming up the hill for the jump, as you can see in some of our shots here, it never quite got off the ground. It just seems like that rear wheel was just always, I mean, wicked wheelies. We did all kinds of wicked wheelies with this thing today, but never quite got fully airborne. And that being said, we actually found another cool feature on this while we were doing jumps. Up here, we actually have a padded knee bolster at the front, which is great for when you get that airborne and then you come down and you slam into the front. It is. Oddly something that I didn't notice when we got it off the trailer, but the first time I hit them and I was like, oh, ooh, that was kind of nice. <laughs> so of course, what is a package like this going to cost you? Well, here in Canada, this unit sits at $16,600, while in the United States, it comes in at $14,500. Now, is it the cheapest unit on the market? No. Is it the most expensive unit on the market? No. It's a good option for everything that you're getting in this package. You've got tons of power. You've got all the luxury features on this thing. It is a great trail. And even if you want to get a little off trail, it is a great all around sled for the dollars you're spending. <laughs> So the day's winding down on this ride with the Viper and overall we really got to say it has been a wonderful machine out here. We've ridden a bunch of different terrains. We've ran it on the lake, hard pack, we've ran it in the powder, we've broken trail with it. And at no point was I worried, even out in the deep bush, that uh-oh, we got to go get something to pull me out. Uh-oh, we don't have enough to get through. Uh-oh, I won't be able to keep up with my buddies going across the lake. This sled does not leave you wanting more. It's got everything you need. And it's, like I said before, not the most expensive sled on the market. It's a great purchase for you if you're just looking to have some fun and be comfortable. Well, that's it for this one, everybody. Go below, leave us a comment, hit that like button, hit that join button if you really want to see some more sled comment. And then make sure you come back to the Truck King YouTube channel to see what we're testing next. But I'm going to go uh, rip up and down this lake a few more times. So uh, you back up. <laughs>